How's it going, YouTube Nation? This is Theoretical Geeks back again with a third installment in how to properly flash your Motorola Atrix 4G with an aftermarket customized ROM. Now, if you didn't see my first two videos, I strongly encourage you to go check those out. Matter of fact, you can't finish these instructions without having done the first two videos. So, again, please go back and check those videos. Now, presuming you have seen those two videos and you have successfully gotten this far, first of all, congratulations. You're making incredible speed. This took me many hours to do on my own, but presuming you are up to speed on where we're at, you should be looking at a screen that says unlocked and fast boot in the top left corner. You should have already preloaded your customized ROM. You should already have installed your original ROM and you should have already unlocked and installed CWM recovery. All right, and that's what we're gonna use now to install our customized ROM. Yay, finally getting to what we wanted to do. Okay, all right, so you've rebooted and it's in this position now. I want you to scroll down by using the volume down button until you see Android recovery mode. Okay, once that's there, as you can see, go ahead and click up on the volume rocker and it should take you into the flashed CWM recovery user interface. Pray that it works. This is where the proof is in the pudding. Yay, okay, great. We have our CWM recovery user interface popped up now. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Go ahead and navigate down to advanced by using the down volume button. And to move around, you can use both up and down on the volume, unlike the previous screen. And you press the power button on the back here to press enter. Now, you're in the advanced options. I want you to go down to the dev, I'm sorry, the Dalvik cache and wipe that clean. Press enter. Now, I should point out, this is where the other YouTube videos I have seen and most of the information that I've perused through on the developers' websites that list out how to do this, they fail miserably at telling you how to do this. Matter of fact, I had to pilfer through someone's uh, problem page and how to figure this out. So once this has popped up, go ahead and confirm the wipe by dragging down to yes, wipe Dalvik cache, press enter. Okay, and that should go pretty, pretty quick. It's been cleared. Next step, I want you to navigate back to the regular cache by going to the bottom where it says go back, press enter. Navigate down to wipe cache partition. This is gonna take a bit longer, but go ahead and press enter. Navigate down to yes. All right, now it should be wiping the cache. Okay. Now, go ahead and click on Reboot System Now. And on the immediate reboot, I want you to hold down the volume button again in the down position. So we're going to press Enter. Let it do its thing. Okay, once it reboots, hold down the volume button in the down position. Keep holding. Keep holding. Okay, we're in fast boot now or rather Fastboot has popped up on the screen. And we're going to open up CWM Recovery again by dragging down to Android Recovery Mode. Oops, if you pass it, just keep pressing down on the volume down button and you can get back to it. It's kind of frustrating that this is the user interface. It really leaves you without any sort of idea of how in the world to get around on it. So you click up on the volume button again, should take you back to CWM which stands for, by the way, Clockwork Mod. Not that that really matters, but that's what the acronym means. Okay. Here's the moment of truth, ladies and gents. You're going to go ahead and install Zip from SD card by clicking Enter. Now, you should have put this on your internal SD because that's the instructions read as. However, if it's on your external, that's fine too. But you're going to go ahead and choose Zip from SD card and since mine's internally located I'm going to press the internal SD card and there is Alien 3 zip 
I also have red pill here. I could choose that if I wanted to, but I'm going to go with Alien 3. Confirm install. And voila. Let it do its thing. Ooh, Alien, hello. How's it going? This is cool. That's fine. It can be cockeyed. It's going to take a bit of time. I believe when I flashed a red pill, it took, I don't know, five minutes or so. So just be patient and wait. At this point, you should be used to waiting. Even if you did this exactly right the first time around, this is this procedure does take quite some time. But hey, you get complete access to your phone. It should be unlocked. I'm not sure about rooting. I, I don't know if this instruction guide I gave you roots your phone. Maybe one of the more intelligent users out there can uh, shoot me a PM and let me know. But I do know that this procedure unlocks and flashes your phone consistently without problem to whatever ROM you want to install. As far as I understand. <laughs> as long as it's in dot .zip form. I'm going to go ahead and let this wait so you can get an idea of what this looks like. And while we're waiting, why don't we just do a quick look at this awesome keyboard I have here. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Not that you guys probably care too much, but I love this keyboard. It's a Luxeed U7 fully programmable color assigned keyboard. As you can tell, if you haven't noticed already, in the background of the this video, you've often seen a lot of color changing keys. Well, that's because this keyboard you can assign just about any color to any key and not only is it cool because it will respond to whatever music you have playing if you have the software to do that which if you have this keyboard you should have it also has the capability of uh, manually assigning different colors to each key so let's say you have some software that has all sorts of macros and it's really just not possible for you to memorize them all well you can color assign which keys are useful and it actually is a pretty nice nice board. I appreciate it a lot. So, okay, it looks like I am finished with the install. Now we're going to go here, click on go back, go back again. Okay, now I'm going to reboot the system and just let it go, finally because it's going to reboot. Might as well unplug it. That's not necessary anymore. It's unlocked. Put the cover back on. Alright, now, if you did everything right, it should boot up with your newly installed ROM. Uh, you should be aware that usually the first boot up takes quite some time. Like, I'm talking a long time you're going to probably think, oh my god, my phone's not working, what did I do wrong? Don't worry, just sit it out, let it install. That's presuming you did everything correct. If you did something wrong, uh, I know I encountered when I first attempted to do this, that this uh, dual-core M screen kept flashing over and over again, uh, flashing in the sense that it would pop up, do its thing, go away, pop up, do its thing, it just got in a recursive loop. Uh, that's an indication, obviously, that you did something wrong. <laughs> So, hopefully that doesn't happen for you, and it will load up very well and pretty to your awesome new customized ROM. Oh, okay, let's see if it gets past this. Thing. All right, well, if it doesn't get past this, I will post another video explaining why, but I'm presuming I did everything okay, and then it's going to upload to Alien, and I'm running about 10 minutes in, so YouTube's going to cut me off. So thanks again for checking out my video. Please check out my other ones if you didn't check them out already, and hopefully you have a customized ROM now. I hope this has helped you out, and good luck with all your other customization that you attempt to do with your Motorola Atrix. This is Theoretical Geeks. Thanks again.